Hi, I'm Emily Ullman and I am a real estate photographer and virtual tour expert. I'm the CEO of Hopscotch Interactive and today I'm going to show you a new feature with the Zillow 3D Home Tour which I think you're going to find to be really powerful for your real estate listings. This is something you could do yourself if you have a 360 camera like the Ricoh Theta Z1 or you could hire a professional photographer to come and make a floor plan for you using a 360 camera. To get started, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect my camera with a wi you know, via Wi-Fi to the app. That's really important because it, it enables the transfer of files between the two. And you'll see that the first thing we have that tells us that we're ready to get rolling is this 360 camera connection uh, notification pops up. And that's really great because that lets us know, okay, we're connected and these devices are talking to each other. Then we're going to go in and choose floor plan and virtual tour or virtual tour. Now, if you are not doing the floor plan, totally fine. Just select that bottom one. If you're going to do a floor plan and virtual tour, you can do it here. And again, it's telling you here are the cameras that you can use. You can use a Theta SC2, a Theta V, or a Theta Z1. I'm going to choose floor plan and tour. And I can skip this part. I'm just going to add the home address later so we can get rolling. This is a single family home. So I'm going to actually pick single family home and get started. When I originally got into this, the first thing that I thought I needed to do was to use the QR code or a blank sheet of paper to create a marker in the tour as my floor plan calibration point. But things changed and so actually now we can do the floor plan calibration marker at any point but if you don't do that one step your floor plan is not going to come back and it's not going to be done it will fail because there's no calibration point for us to know what's the what is the scale what's the distance between my camera and that um and that marker or that sheet of paper and what i've got is i've got one here from zillow the camera and the software knows the measurements and so it uses that to computationally derive the scale. Now that's really important because we're creating a floor plan and we want to know the measurements, we want to know the dimensions. So this QR code or, or an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper is going to be the way that we kind of cheat our way using the intelligence of the system to, to build that floor plan. In this step, when we are doing our floor plan calibration, it sounds super technical. It's not. All you have to do is you have to take your eight and a half by 11 piece of paper or your QR code and you need to place this. I actually think I need to place it vertically and I need to make sure that that is one and a half, so 18 inches, or uh, more than 18 inches, so look, I'm at 18 inches, to three feet away from the base of my monopod. So I have just about this much room in which to place it. So I could put it out here, you know, and I don't need to use this. You can totally eyeball it. I just happen to have this because I think it'll help illustrate it to you a little bit better. But I would just say like comfortable distance here away from the camera is all you need to do. And then that will be your calibration shot. I'm going to go back into the app and then I'm going to go back into my tour and add a new spot. And this is going to be floor plan calibration. Again, if you miss this, this step, you won't have a floor plan because there will be nothing to calibrate against. So it's really important. So we're going to hit OK. And it even tells you, you know, place it here, make sure it's this distance. Um, and okay. Now um, it says, before you take your panorama, place an eight and a half by 11 standard US piece of paper there. I have a fancy one. So I'm using my fancy one. And then this is already showing you that it's hidden. So it's not even gonna end up in your final tour. It's already got the, like the line through the eye. So this one will be hidden from the tour. So if you do it as your first shot, Make sure you do it again because this one will not and won't show up in the final tour, which is good. You don't really want to have a QR code on the, on the floor. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go hide and take this shot. I'll be right back. Here is my very first um, scan or or 360 shot in the tour, and I have a weighted monopod here, and that is very helpful um, as long as it's stable and it's level, you should have good image quality if you're using a 360 camera. Now this is a, a model by Best360, 
They're out of the UK. Um, they run, I think, about 160 or 170 pounds. Um, and then we've added some uh, stabilization in the form of weights to the bottom to keep everything steady. Rico's Data makes the TM1. There is a, um, a number of different monopods that you can use, but you do not want to make the mistake of not using either a weighted monopod or sandbags or some additional weight because I have already experienced myself what wind and instability can do and I have wrecked two lenses, not since I own the Z1, but of predecessors to this camera and it's an expensive mistake to learn. So always weight your monopod and make sure that you have stability before you walk away because when you're taking the shot you're not going to be in the scene. That means that you're going to want to have confidence that you can walk away and not be afraid that your camera is going to get knocked over or fall over in the wind or basically like all it takes is once and then the lens is wrecked because it's a convex lens. So. Anyway, better to be safe and to know that you are working with good gear than to make the mistake and have to try and get it repaired. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our first shot. So I like to call this one the foyer. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire up my foyer shot. And um, I'm operating this just on my iPhone. I could use an iPad. Um, I could use, you know, my, you know, those two handheld devices. They work like a remote control and then it makes it really easy to operate the camera. So let's just get going on this and take the first shot. I'm gonna hide around the corner so that I don't end up in it. And then this will be my very first shot on the tour. I'm all done with the technical part. Like that was the hard part. So now we're just gonna go back and resume the previous tour. And you can see that the, that spot is, you know, that, um, that 360 is uploading, we've got the foyer, we've got the floor plan calibration shot. It's getting that data coming over from the cell or from the device onto my phone. And now I'm just gonna go like I regularly would and do a tour. So if you haven't done one before, what you need to do is you need to then just pick up your monopod, hide this guy or hide your sheet of paper, and then just basically find a path of travel that will be the right path of travel for you to navigate through the space and don't overdo it with too many 360s. I would say less is more when you're doing a Zillow tour, um, but you know, we are calibrating um, to make a floor plan. So I do want to put this in front of, you know, any new entrance to a space that I want to capture. So if I want to go capture the storage area, then I'm going to take a shot in front of the storage area, one inside of it, but probably not multiple shots inside the storage area. More data is good, but more data also makes a weird tour. So um, we're looking for that sweet spot between lots of 360s and uh, just enough to make sure that we get a, a good tour uh, because we have, we have two things we're trying to accomplish. Floor plan that looks accurate and a good tour. Okay, so on to the next spot. You can see that the height of this is right at my shoulder. That's exactly where you want it to be. You don't want it to be much higher than that or much lower than that. That's perfect. Um, it needs to be low enough that you get the whole room. When you're shooting in 360, a lot of times, you know, and especially in real estate, you know, real estate photographers, we shoot usually at chest height because all of the inf information that we want is, is here, is like below eye level. Like I do care what the cabinets have, to say, you know, like what do they what do they look like? The, all the staging, all the color, all of that is right here, like the chairs, the flowers, the vases, and so we want this camera to pick that up and to be sure that it's um, it's seeing all of that in its best shot. One thing I want to make sure you guys see is that I actually have a, something of an error happening in the white balance with my theta, and so this happens where. As you can see, there's a really pink or almost orange cast on the walls here that looks nothing like this room. So I am actually going to retake it. Now, if you look at these previous ones, you can see, look, the white's okay. It's on the cool side. The temperature here is way off. That is something you have to train your eye to know is happening. And we're gonna retake this shot. Is there anything else you can do to affect the white balance? Absolutely not. Now look, that one, just fine. It's a known bug, but that one is fine. And the one we just took, 
before we retook it was totally whack. So I don't know how else to fix it other than to see it with my eyes and go, oh wait, I need to retake that shot. But that is a mistake that people make when they're using this for the first time, especially because you're kind of leaving a lot to the autopilot um, of the tour creation. So right here, we're gonna do one here, which is in the hallway, and that'll take us into this room and the bedroom. Do you think that this takes shots faster than the Matterport? Oh yeah, it does. The shots are only doing the, the panorama, so it doesn't have to also um, capture the same amount of data. And so a rotation on the Matterport, if you're using the Pro 2, can be anywhere from, let's say 20 to 25 seconds, usually, usually depending on the processing speed of your um, capture device. You know, it can, it can be really fast, um, but if you're using a Pro 1, it can be 44 seconds, 45 seconds. And um, if you're using the Theta as your capture device for Matterport, it's the same speed, but um, I am going, you know, faster anyway using this because um, the reason I'm going faster using this is because I'm only concerned with panoramas. I'm not paying attention to any alignment whatsoever. That's really not something I need to take into consideration. And so when I'm doing this tour, it just, it's wherever I think the natural next spot for the pano is. And with Matterport, I actually need to pay attention because I need it to align. And if it doesn't align, then it costs me even more time because sometimes you have to you know, retake it, you have to figure out what went wrong, you have to restart your app, so it's a lot faster. It's more like a sprint versus Matterport is good for a marathon, because yeah. it can last like Eight 10 hours, hours yeah, or whatever. Yeah, 10 hours, exactly. Maybe it overheated? It says 44%, so we're gonna have to boogie to um, get through this. I'm gonna close the app and have it restart because it says 44%. I get oftentimes, yeah, there's like a low battery indicator. So either the low battery indicator is wrong here or it's wrong in the tour. This is my laundry shot. Okay, so one of the things that's super nice about using 360 instead of using 3D is that if I need to open doors and block things, I'm not gonna get in trouble when I'm scanning it. Um, because I'm not scanning. So I can pop this shot here for the laundry and it'll be just fine. Now I also got one of those same image quality issues that just popped up again in the primary bathroom. So it could be LED lighting, it could be a number of factors, but that just doesn't look right. So I'm gonna try and take that shot again. We're not gonna change anything. Let's just see what happens if we retake it. So this is another way to quality check your work. Um, what you want to do is before you leave the property is make sure your floor plan calibration point is there, but you want to set the default view of your, of your shots. This will be the thumbnail positioning. I can't tell you how many times people ask me, I keep setting, resetting the, the position and it doesn't take it. And I have to tell them, I'm so sorry, you can only set it here before you upload it. So that is kind of a bummer. But go through every shot and set it, including the four floor plan calibration. You can see that it showed up there. You're kind of looking for a few things. You're looking sure to make sure your white balance is okay. You're looking sure to make, or you're, you're looking to make sure that you have um, an interesting shot for the kitchen, for example, an interesting open, opening shot. And you're looking for that yellow or orangey off, off balance um, in the color because that is, is a big issue. So, but I'm making sure that I have the, um, you know, all the images that I need and that something doesn't need to be retaken. So those are kind of the main things that I'm looking for. Um, oh, I would say the uh, level. That was probably the next thing I wanted to say was that you gotta make sure that you have all these images leveled. So pantry is looking good, kitchen's looking good. I'm just setting these images and making sure that before I go and upload this at home, that I have set an actually nice image um, to be the focal point. Here it's really tricky. I only really took that shot for the floor plan. All right, looking pretty good. At exterior curbside. Five seconds, let's go. 
<laughs> exactly. You need to have fun with it. <laughs> By the way, I didn't want to forget, and I wanted to make sure to give a special thanks to Will Mollard and Mike Pittler from Workshop One. They are the principal architects and developers here at Mac West 5, which has just finished construction in the Longfellow District in Oakland. So check the links in the description if you want to visit macwest5.com to see the links to our Zillow tours or to get more information. And thank you so much. And please check us out and contact us, like, subscribe, and be in touch. And you can see where to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, etc. Thanks guys. Hey guys, there are just a couple more tips that I want to give you before you go ahead and start making your Zillow floor plan tours like a pro. So um, what you're going to want to do is before you go ahead and publish that tour and finish it, you are going to be asked uh, to set the grade um, and select a grade for your uh, individual floors that you have shot. So you're going to toggle that button to the right if the floor that you shot is below ground or below grade. Um, so make sure you do that and check it. It'll help with the floor plan generation. And uh, once you've done that, you can hit capture complete and it'll take you to the publishing page and you can set uh, finish without publishing. And that's what I always do because then you can go ahead and edit afterwards. Um, one last tip I wanted to give you guys is that um, basically we found out that after a couple of weeks of testing um, that one of the things that we noticed was that even with all of these uh, you know things that we followed uh, we still might have a tour or two that would fail the uh, floor plan um, generation so um, just keep in mind that it's possible that it might fail. If that happens, um, reach out to Zillow and their customer support and sometimes they can pinpoint the problem and see exactly what went wrong and salvage your tour. Um, but um, generally speaking, if it is a single family home or a simple property, um, you should be good to go. So good luck and uh, thanks so much.